And a lot of people talk about trying to open the sector up. Mm. And I wonder if you think it is opening up. I think that's a very interesting question, and particularly when we're talking of some global challenges, as we've been talking about this week on climate change, for instance, that question becomes very relevant. We were started in 1981, and at that time we were pretty much looking at service providers. We were looking at utilities, we were looking at national governments, local governments, and largely the civil society organizations who are responsible uh, or who are engaged in water and sanitation issues. It was much later that sanitation actually got onto the agenda. But now when we talk about sector, we're talking about a number of actors who have a role in providing services on the ground, who have a role in regulating services, and who have a role in policy making. And that then cuts across at a global level to include the UN system because we have 23 different UN organizations working on water and sanitation. It's about the academic and research institutions. So that's where institutions like the Cranfield or IRC or CV come into the picture. We're looking at a, a number of donors who are increasingly interested in, in water and sanitation. But there was a very interesting presentation yesterday from South Africa, which is on water mm -hmm. for growth and development. And that is underpinning your question on, on opening up the sector. A lot of water and sanitation related budgets, for instance, would possibly sit with the health department, would sit with the education department, would sit with the departments responsible for forestry, mines, energy. So actually, the more we think about water sector opening up, it's, it's across a number of sectors who have anything to do with water and sanitation, who have anything to do with getting people uh, access to basic human services. So we are now talking of a much wider sector, but there is a challenge in there, uh, and it's quite evident in this week as well, that we don't seem to have many people from outside the traditional water and sanitation sector. We don't have very many educationists, we don't have very many health professionals, but I think it's opening up. We have yeah. WHO here, and truly they will be bringing in the health side of things, and, and we know that UNESCO has been involved in a big way, but that's an area where we need to push much more on. We also need to get people who are into conservation, into ecology, into environmental engineering. So yeah, if we're really talking about addressing the water and sanitation crisis, we really have to make it a much wider engagement across the world. Yeah. I mean, we were talking earlier about sharing knowledge around the sector. I mean, I'm from ACVO and you know, we've, we've been looking at how do you share knowledge through open, open source tools and also create in, um, sharing knowledge via wiki like tools. I wonder if, because most of the answers in terms of what's needed mm. to solve this global water crisis are out there, aren't they? But they're, they're just not necessarily, the, the information is not necessarily where it needs to be. Yeah. Access to information is absolutely important. In many places we have found that, uh, let's talk about Sub-Saharan Africa, you, you find people in the Department of Water, for instance, who are really keen to do something, but they don't have the capacity, they don't have the information. And I think there is something that we all have, I mean, we all have a role to play in making information much more free-flowing, much more accessible, so that we are not reinventing the wheel. Let me give an example of something called a rope pump, which was done in Nicaragua as, uh, as something that can be locally managed and sustained and which is low cost. We tried uh, to bring the technology over to uh, Mozambique and it's been very successful. Yeah. But we find that many of our own country programs then try to reinvent the wheel in their own country context. And we've been saying, let's put a stop to it because there is a real, uh, it's really important for us to harness the knowledge to make sure that we're building on the successes and not repeating on the failures. Yeah. So wherever you go for ecological sanitation, lots of work has been done on that, but not much is shared. So everyone thinks that it's a new thing that they're doing. We, uh, events like CV, therefore, uh, uh, like the World Water Week, therefore, really play a critical role in making sure that that knowledge is, at least people are aware of that knowledge in existence. And I think your initiative, therefore, is a critical step to make sure that the knowledge is much more free-flowing, much more accessible at such a low cost. And in a, in a very simple way, it's not about reading tomes and tomes of volumes on... on, on I, such keep, a yeah, I keep... People keep leaving enormous booklets in here of things, <laughs> and I keep taking them away and throwing them away because it's just like, you know, th th this place is actually full of these great tones. That, Indeed. That I, I and I, I sort of wonder, you know, you look around, you hear at the at the event, and it's all, you know, over. I can't see any from here, but um, <laughs> you know, this place is full of booklets. Yes. And I wonder who reads them. Indeed. I think we also need to be 
uh, to, to understand that the, the, the new generation that's coming in are much more technologically savvy. They would rather have something that's online. They would rather have something that they can play around with. They can. They rather have something they can dip in and dip out yeah. uh, because they have short attention spans. At the same time, they're also curious, immensely curious, and they have the energy to actually do that research and that analysis, but they'd rather do it something in, in a fun way, uh, which is having an online resource. Yeah. So I think we need to be conscious of that. We need to be conscious of the fact that obviously the world is shrinking thanks to technology, costs are shrinking, and, and I think there's a big role that we, we all can play to actually popularize some of the more cost-effective and easily accessible. To me, access is absolutely key. Yeah. Have something accessible is going to be used very widely rather than physical transfer of thick reports and books. It has its own place. I'm not sort of undermining the role of publications, but if you're talking of actual practitioners who spend a lot of time on the field looking for ideas, looking for solutions and actually doing stuff, they don't have the energy. They don't have the energy of the academicians to be reading lots of books. They would want something. I go to a village, I find there's a problem in this particular area. Where do I look for a solution? If there's something online available, that's great. They can see pictures, they can listen to testimonials, yeah. they, can, they can actually make it more interactive rather than... And, and, and more importantly, online resources tend to be pretty much updated. Uh, you know, you're not looking at something published in 1980, yeah. the relevance of which is questionable now with, with everything changing around you.